So, good afternoon. Thanks. Okay, so these are my disclosure, and uh, as you already seen, we have a, a series of uh, possibility to use laser, and uh, you have everybody probably have experience to do uh, with a uh, laser, and uh, probably mostly with the argon laser of the 532 nanometer but uh, now we have also the possibility of the yellow and, and you know one of the advantage of uh, the yellow is that uh, is, uh, the peak of absorption at the level of uh, for the hemoglobin and that is actually something that we can use for uh, targeting your uh, our you know uh, retina so you actually see that there are a series of uh, wavelengths, and also for the yellow, you can be from 561 to 586, but have you seen in uh, that graph that I showed you before, the maximum peak for the hemoglobin absorption is a 577. So the yellow 577 can have some advantages uh, comparing with the other. We already heard about, uh, you know, the diabetic re retinopathy, but, uh, you know, we, we still have to use uh, also the panretinal photocoagulation. So not just for uh, the edema, but for uh, uh, treating the ischemic area. And uh, following, you know, the uh, criteria of DRS or TDRS, we can actually use and perform our, you know, panretinal photocoagulation just using the yellow laser. We don't need uh, the green laser. Uh, you have to adjust the power because it's not exactly, because the different absorption is not exactly the same parameter that you were used to use with the 532, but the effect is exactly the same. So, uh, and, and uh, as we heard for the macro grid, and I will not spend too much time, one of the things that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's actually important to underline is that uh, here are some uh, from this paper by Newton and uh, and Doreen was uh, actually showing the different approach of the laser. And you see, as uh, uh, it was underlined by uh, Victor, the low intensity, high density, uh, you know, macro pulse, it's important to obtain the results that uh, uh, was uh, uh, obtained by Victor and all the others that use such a things. It's different from the Pascal, uh, it's not a micropulse uh, laser, and uh, the effect it's a little bit more evident, if we want to say. You know, the concept of uh, using the micropulse in the way that Victor suggested, comparing with the Pascal, it's a different thing. So, but you can actually use for uh, laser, for anything, for, for a barrage. So you see here with ICG, just to show you know, the effect of the laser and you have to create a damage, of course, so you want to burn much more than not what you try not to do with a micropulse. Or uh, you can actually do a treatment uh, for uh, AMD. You know that uh, um, every study shows that uh, the rate of closure of polyps, not the rate of reducing the edema, but just closing the polyps, that is quite important because uh, you know, one of the possible effects of a polypoidal lesion, it's a huge hemorrhage. So you want to have uh, the polyps closed. And uh, PDT was much better than uh, Lucentis. Uh, and, uh, but of course, you can do also laser if you are not uh, focusing in one uh, point. And here, just to show, you know, a polyps over here that was treated, you, of course, the lesion is all this, but you want to treat just the polyps because of leaking and it can create hemorrhage. And uh, just after uh, the treatment, you know, as I suggested by uh, uh, Victor, that autofluorescent can help you to understand if you create or not damage in, at the level of RPE. And here, just to show that uh, the polyps was here, and you almost don't see any damage here, but just able to close, as this image is showing the fluorescent ICG, the bulge. So you have not to destroy the retina if you want to close. And using yellow, due to the absorption by blood, it's actually even better. This is another case. And just to show you know, the, the results of the laser treatments, but in particular, I would like to show the color picture also. 
because uh, this was before and after. And you see that it just, just a little <coughs> bit of uh, changing, considering the fact that also there was a blood, so you can actually have more absorption at the uh, level of the uh, subretinal uh, retina. So, um, subretinal level, sorry. Uh, this is a polypoidal lesion again, and just uh, another example of uh, treating and solving the, the problem just using laser. But sometimes you cannot go so close to the fovea, so you actually can do something else. And uh, the feeder vessel, uh, in particular for polypoidal lesion, can be advantage because uh, uh, the flow is low, so the laser approach could be fine. Just an example, uh, just focusing here, you will see that uh, the characteristic of the uh, polyps, slow filling, pulsatile uh, uh, vessel, you see here, the veins that are filling, and uh, just to show, you know, the late, the mid phase, where you actually see all the bulge, and the late phase where you have uh, the uh, washout. So these are polyps. Now, where we have to treat? We have to treat over, or we can actually treat the feeder? Uh, this, uh, just uh, where actually we treat, over here. And uh, the, you see the polyps close completely. And so, and there was no treatment here, so the, the dark part is just the masking effect of a polyp that is closed. And uh, quite interestingly, if you le look carefully here, you see the vessel that it's not filled. So you have a background that is fluorescent because we inject again uh, fluorescein to, to double check. But the vessel here, the vein, and this is the artery, is completely closed. So there is a masking effect of the vessel under the surrounding fluorescein angiography. And here the ACG the same. So what about retinal macroaneurysm? Uh, we have a case of a coast disease, so diffuse macroaneurysm, and this is the uh, you know, just to clarify that this is actually a, a, a coast disease with the peripheral changes. And here you see the um, patient with the huge edema, huge uh, degeneration. So we, it was tried, uh, you know, six injection anti-VGF, no effect. So we started to do, you know, uh, little by little, uh, focusing on, uh, on the microaneurysm. And because of that, yellow is very, very effective. And you see, in, uh, one year later, there are still some uh, open uh, microaneurysm, but less leakage. And in fact, the OCT moved from this to this. I uh, can tell you that I've never expected such an effect. But this was, a, a, of course, an advanced case. I just want to show another case, young uh, subjects with uh, some microaneurysm over here. And we just did the laser. Uh, focal laser, and here it's uh, before and after. You see the two the fact just focusing on the, and I can get tell you again, yellow is very useful for sorry, is very useful for for that. Just moving in uh, different things. One of the concepts that I want to tell you is that uh, when you use green laser. Of course, the fact it's uh, coming from the RP absorption, so you have to have you have to put some energy at the level of the RPE to have uh, the effect back. So, if you want to use, close a microaneurysm with a green, you use uh, the RPE as a, 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 a you know absorption uh, material. And so, uh, what you want is that uh, if you have a huge edema, you rather prefer to do the injection, reduce the edema and then targeting the macroaneurysm because uh, if you have to then get, uh, go back, you have to create more energy at the level of RPE and so you can create more damage. When you use yellow, actually, it's absorbed by uh, uh, you know, hemoglobin. So we, are not, we don't need to reach the RPE. So in, it could be that uh, it's better to have and it's easier to focus on uh, the macroaneurysm, if we have a lot of edema. 
So we are far from the RPE, we are far from the photoreceptors, and so it's uh, safer. So you can actually target, and then if you want as a, 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 a faster effect, you can inject. But for the focusing the treatment, it's better to have with the yellow uh, even more edema. So I'm still using, uh, <coughs> sorry, laser, and I train my, since it was uh, five years old, to use laser. Thanks. <laughs>